Alrighty guys, welcome back to another Lego set review from Brick by Brick. And today we have set number 70640. This is the Sons of Garmadon headquarters. Containing 530 pieces and retailing for $39.99. You know, this seems like a pretty good deal. Just right off the bat. Um, the box size is significantly larger. Like, I think this is a $60 box size. Um, but it's... Regardless, it's significantly larger than the Ninja Nightcrawler box, which is the other $40 set from the Wave. Um, you know, there's a look at the back of the box, shows you there are three masks to collect. This contains the Mask of Hatred, right? Yeah. And, you know, the set does contain five minifigures. Uh, I think one of which is exclusive, or two of which are exclusive. And, you know, I did record this review once a long time ago. This was one of the first Sons of Garmadon sets I got, but that was back when I had my old computer and before I was able to edit and upload this review, uh, it got deleted because my computer like died, period. So I decided that I wanted to you know, get this review out eventually to you guys, so I'm deciding to do it again. Hopefully, you know, it was worth it. Uh, but. Yeah, let's uh, let's take a look at the actual set again. In addition to the headquarters build, uh, to start off with, the first thing that you put together is this little motorcycle. And this is actually a really, really nice motorcycle build. Like, the level of detail on this is really good, and the scale is pretty decent. It's obviously a lot longer than it should be, but, you know, in proportion to a minifigure, it's about their height, um, you know, it's still oversized, but less so than many other, um, you know, motorcycles that are done in, um, you know, in minifigure scale for action themes like Ninjago and such, uh, you know, that aren't done with just a single motorcycle piece. This is one of the smaller ones that they have done in an official set, and I like that. I think that that works pretty well. Um, you know, the scale is not completely unreasonable. Uh, and as far as the level of detail on the cycle itself, I like how we've got the, you know, spokes leading to the front wheel. Front wheel spins pretty decently. Sometimes it'll, uh, you know, not want to spin as great, but like when you put it on, like, it won't want to spin like this always, but it'll always spin when you, you know, are pushing the motorcycle around. Um, this front section can be angled forward, um, that's mainly just a side effect of, you know, how it's put together, but if you wanted to, like, break the motorcycle like that, you can do that. And I like the use of the ray gun pieces here, I think that adds a little bit of, you know, kind of engine -y looking detail. Um, the handlebars here, you know, work just fine. Your figure just sits on and holds them. And the set uh, designs this to fit this figure, uh, Skip Vicious, but, you know, you could put any figure on it. Uh, this is just what they show on the box. And the one thing that this uh, motorcycle does not have is a place to hold this guy's weapons, so he's just going to have to leave them somewhere. Uh, you know, I mean, it's kind of... Uh, that's okay. I mean, it would have been nice to have just a clip on the side, but you do have the back wheels, which are a little bit... Um, you know, plain compared to the front section, but, you know, overall, it, it's fine. And I actually really, really like this uh, motorcycle design. I think this is probably my favorite one from the Sons of Garmadon sub-theme as a whole. And here is the entirety of the HQ. The motorcycle is actually around partially so it can um, sit here. This is where it is designed to just fit in place. And it fits right onto that stud there. It's just a jumper plate back there. You know, it looks fine in that area. Uh, back there, there is a little lamp above it so you can, you know, see it. There's a wrench and a coffee mug. Presumably someone's working on it and you can kind of pose them there to get their arms in the right spot. You can kind of sit them on those um, four studs right there. And then it kind of looks like they're working on it. And I think that that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, that section is neat. Right over here, uh, this it's designed to be like underground in a subway um, system uh, that's abandoned. So you have a little waiting area, um, presumably for people who are, you know, waiting next to or waiting for a train or whatever back when this used to be a subway station. And, you know, you could sit figures on that if you wanted to, but there's no studs, so they will fall off pretty easily. 
I like the little bit of rock work and piping that we get over here, and then here is the first big play feature, and that is this spinning blade. There's a sticker on that, that's not a print. And then right here with these gears, uh, you know, it's just hooked up so that when you turn it uh, side to side, it'll do its thing. Uh, there is a tire underneath there, and it's designed so that, you know, we'll be looking at this spinner in a second, but it's just at the right height so that if this spinner um, knocks into it while it's just spinning, it'll turn the actual saw blade. Which is kind of cool if you can get it to work, but it's really hard to, you know, be accurate enough to actually hit these things. Um, and you'll see that later. I'll do as much as I can of just messing around with the Spijitsu uh, features. Uh, we're going to skip over the center door for just a second and look at the other side. Where, uh, this, uh, this side I think it has a little bit more mass to it than the other side. Uh, they're both, you know, about equal in, you know, uh, other dimensions, but just height is different, really. Um, here is another one of those features. You would spin the spinner, and it would cause those hammers to swing around like crazy. You know, hammer parts are cool to get, and, you know, this feature is, you know, nice when it actually works, but it doesn't always, you know, you can't always hit your spinner, like, even then, I'm just spinning it by hand, which is presumably more accurate than uh, just going in with the whole, um, the whole spinner ripcord feature, but, you know, there's that. I'm gonna pull this out of the way for just a second so that we can see this section here. There's a panel here with a big sticker. I believe this is, uh, the same ACDC characters from the CMF series with the Cole minifigures, so it's cool to get this whole like poster on the wall. Obviously it's kind of like beat up and dirty, so I don't know if you'd want to be using that specifically in you know all applications of that. Maybe it would have been nice if the poster was fine, but it does make sense for this sewer setting. And up above, we have this really awesome sticker with the Sons of Garmadon logo. I this design is really, really cool. And there's a little light on top that you can angle up and down. This can also be uh, brought down completely if you wanted to. Um, I don't know exactly why you'd want to do that, but you could. Uh, and I guess one thing that you could do if you really wanted to, you could hide a weapon in there. Um, you have to position it right so it doesn't fall out. And then you could just hide it away. Which, you know, that's, that's cool, I guess. Uh, not really an advertised feature, but it is something that can be done. And I should probably return that. And you could just turn that backwards and that would still work. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's cool. And put that back in place. And move on to the last section here. Which, this section is, you know, pretty good looking as well. You've got this uh, ATM, which... Is pretty neat and this actually pops out for reasons that you'll see in just a second but there are three stickers on here uh, the one you know with the actual pin code machine and then we've got whatever that is I don't know it's kind of a cool little device I don't know what those characters translate to I didn't think to translate that over uh, you also have a subway map up here which is a really good sticker as well and um, again, this is basically the same pipework and brick design from the other side with the little bench. And there's a little light up here, uh, which, you know, presumably would be like a go-stop light for the subway. And then that can be knocked over pretty easily. It's just on a Technic axle. Uh, you can't, like, just hit it and it'll fall, but, you know, you can change the angle. So, say, you know, driving the bike and your figure knocks it down and then they crash, boom, explosion, dead. Uh, but, you know, that, that's, that's cool, I guess. A little bit of added play feature. Basically, uh, all they had to do to make that possible was just swap out two pieces, so, you know, because we'd still want to get the light here uh, for appearance. Looks good. Uh, this is a jail cell, so that's why, you know, the wall pops out. You can trap a figure in there and they can go, bam and break out. That's a cool play feature. I mean, you know, it's very, very simple to do. Again, just adding in one jumper plate. You know, it works. And this is not a door, though, which is the one thing that's kind of weird, so you do have to put your figure in from the back. Uh, it would have been cool to get a door there. Obviously, it doesn't have a swing space, though. And then, the last little uh, spinjitsu feature is 
uh, on the box advertised to be done with this, but you could do it with any of the figures. And you know, you just move this back and forward. And again, uh, the cool thing with this one is that when you spin it, it'll spin that uh, as in, you know, as if to uh, imply that the spinner is attacking him. Uh, you know, it sends him flying and spinning away. You know, that's, that's alright. Uh, center section is just doors, really. Uh, but there's a cool feature with the doors. And you have stickers here and here as well as the keep out. But if you send something through the doors, like the spinner, and you're supposed to have it actually spinning, uh, but I can't get that to work for the life of me. Usually, again, um, after we cut from the figures, we'll just show you a bunch of me, uh, you know, playing around with the Spinditsu features. But that just knocks the mask off. It's loosely attached up here at the very top. And we're going to pull off the sides for this. Uh, but it's just loosely attached at the top and you just push a gate open and it will knock this thing up which in theory knocks the helmet off it doesn't always work uh, you just you really have to do it with a lot of force in order for it to work like that uh, if you just hit it or tap it it won't fall over which is part of what makes it so hard to pull off with the spinner but when it works it's a cool feature First up for figs, we have Snake Jaguar and Skip Vicious. Skip Vicious is just a generic Sons of Garmadon member. Uh, you know, it basically is what it is. The legs appear on, you know, um, other figures similar to this, I believe. He actually has exactly the same face and basically exactly the same part composition as Luke Cunningham from the Katana V11. And, you know, I like the design a lot. I like the torso. The torsos are the same between these two. Because Zane's trying to blend in as Snake Jaguar. Um, yeah, so, you know, there's the back printing. I'm not going to bother taking Zane's katanas off because you know what the back printing looks like because it's right there. Skip has no alternate facial expression. I like the, the shoulder armor piece that he uses. It's the same that they introduced specifically for Mr. E and then use it for other Zones of Garmadon members as well. And, you know, there's the front face for him, which is good. Uh, he comes with a black crowbar, which is kind of cool to get that in that color. And then the red katana. And Zane just comes with the katanas on his back. And his facial expression is interesting because it's one of the single-sided human Zane faces from, you know, the Ninjago movie design. But this one is different because it doesn't have the hair printed on the back. This specific head only also appears in the Zane um, kendo pod. So, you know, both of these figures, I really like the torso design. Uh, that they use for these guys with the purple and the blue um, but and also I really really like the fact that we get Zane in a Snake Jaguar outfit obviously you could have built it yourself with parts that are in the other sets but you know it's nice that they officially give it to us so you don't have to take your only Zane apart if you know you only get one set with Zane um, and then his legs are just the or the flat silver color, um, which, you know, is accurate to the show. Um, the, maybe they were dark bluish gray in the show, but, you know, the silver works well, too. And it's cool to get those legs in that color anyway. Here we have Nails and Ultraviolet. Ultraviolet also appears in the other $40 set, the Ninja Nightcrawler. However, in that set, she appears in a different variant, uh, this one here. And both figures share the same leg design, but this one has an exclusive torso. I actually like this uh, torso a lot. This is the one that appears more in the show. Um, you know, basically, um, she only has the other version when she puts the mask on, which you get the mask in the set, and you can put it on here. I'll do that in a second. Um, but underneath 
her um, her little purple ninja mask, which was used a lot in possessions, so it's not new. Um, you know, she does have a face, which you know, faces are important. Uh, and she's smiling here. It's you know, it, it works. And there is no back printing on that head, obviously, because you would be able to see it when she has her hair. Her hair is attached with a stud this time, uh, unlike with Nauticon, where they just, you know, put the um, the piece straight in the head. Um, with Nauticon, it was more accurate to put the piece just straight in the head, because you didn't have, like, a thing there. But she does have a thing going around her hair in the show, I believe. Not a stud, but, like, you know, the stud on her head changes color. And, you know, I, I guess that works. It's definitely a whole lot more sturdy. Like, on Nauticon, this thing, if you touch it, it will come out. I like the back printing on her torso. And Nails here gets the um, A-Team Mohawk in red. Uh, his back printing, you know, is good. He comes with a red katana. There's the printing on the front of his torso, as well as the front of his face. And if we were to put the mask on Ultraviolet... She'd look like that. And, you know, that looks fine. If you don't get the Ninja Nightcrawler, you can just do that for putting the mask on Ultraviolet. Um, it would have been really great if they went above and beyond and included just the armor piece as well from this one. But I think that this is perfectly acceptable and works just fine. So, you know, it's it's not, uh, not bad. Uh, but neither of these figures um, are exclusive characters. This is exclusive. This guy, Nails, also appears in the uh, Temple of Resurrection, except he has large legs and is called Chopper Maroon. Alrighty guys, welcome back to another Lego set review from Brick by Brick, and today we have the Lloyd's Benjutsu Master... Oh wait, never mind, we're actually still in the Sons of Garmadon HQ. Uh, oh, that's awkward. But, uh, this spinner and, you know, handle is included in the set. Guess what, it works exactly like all the other Benjutsu Masters, which... I've all reviewed on my channel. Um, it's actually literally identical build for the handle. Like, I checked even the inside parts. They're 100% exactly the same as the Lloyd um, Spinjitzu set from the Ninjago movie. And the one thing that has changed is the color of the spinner itself. It is gold now instead of green. And, yeah, that's it. The figure is, like, the only good one of the Spinjitzu Master variants, though, so I guess that's a good thing. Uh, I know when I reviewed all the Spinjitzu Masters on my channel, I consistently was complaining about the design of the figures, how they always use the same legs, and the legs use gold, and pretty much all of the other ones used, like, silver accents on their torso. At least Lloyd uses gold. So, you know, I, I can respect the design of this one. It's not my favorite figure ever, and I prefer the regular Sons of Gramadon suit, and honestly would rather have just gotten a third one of those in this set, but, you know, it's it's okay. It's cool to get something exclusive, I guess, and, you know, he does have his standard Ninjago movie facial uh, expressions, and the standard Ninjago movie mask on the top with the new green bottom half of the mask from the Sons of Gramadon sets, and he does come with silver shurikens, which always like silver shurikens. Last but not least, you can pose the motorcycle coming through the door, too, in addition to leaving it there, uh, just for the record. Overall, I think that, you know, this set has a lot of good stuff to offer. I think the best thing about it is the price. The $40, you definitely get more than $40 worth of stuff here. I mean, like, this and the, like, the spinner alone, that's the contents of a $10 set. We'll give it 7 because... You know, I don't really think they're worth $10 in the first place. This, you know, easily $5 of value. Uh, so then, you know, the rest of it has to be like 28 right? I can do math. And I think you get definitely, you know, definitely a good value out of this. I think the figures are all pretty good. I like Snake Jaguar. I mean, yeah, he's not really exclusive, but he's a very cool character inclusion. And, you know, I think uh, it's, it's pretty neat. Also, I think that's supposed to be like that. Uh, there we go. I fixed it. Uh, you're probably yelling at me earlier. Ultraviolet's a really cool figure. Um, and, you know, these guys are fine. And, you know, you get the mask. And I think overall this just looks nice. Uh, some of the features don't work perfectly, but, you know, they're really cool for what they are. They're very innovative, and I think that if you wanted to try out this uh, whole spinner thing... This is the set to do it with. I'm really not a fan of these spinners by themselves, especially in you know their own sets. I don't 
I think the figures are great. Uh, Lloyd is the only one that I think is, you know, kind of good. Uh, overall, I think that this is the way to go. Because, you know, you actually get stuff that the spinners can do instead of just spinning. Because that gets really old really quickly. With this, you know, I mean, th there's a bunch of... Uh, you know, little basic simple action features, but I think that, you know, they're challenging to pull off, and I think that that makes them a little bit more interesting just because, you know, there's the more you can do with it because you can try it again and again. Um, but anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below, and I will see you guys all next time. Bye, everyone.